The Apostle Paul said, all spiritual blessings are ours in Christ Jesus. What does it mean that we've got all spiritual blessings? And what are the benefits and blessings of being a Christian? Christians are the most blessed people in all the world. And today we want to illustrate for you from the scripture some of the wonderful blessings we have as a Christian. If you're not a Christian, we hope it will motivate you to want to become one if you are a child of God. We hope today's lesson will do nothing but encourage us to greater faithfulness in the kingdom. So do you have your Bible? Hope you got your Bible and that you'll follow along today and stay tuned for this great study. To destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim the news unto the poor. The gospel the of Christ. Spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective Play Stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. Story is told of a father who had two sons. These two sons were as different as day and night. One of those sons was an eternal optimist. Everything was, no matter how bad it was, everything was, there was always a bright spot he could find. The other was a terrible pessimist. Even if it was a good situation, he could find something to complain about. And so the father thought he needed to bring both these boys closer to center. And so one day he took them to a psychologist with a plan. The psychologist was going to help the eternal optimist to see that everything wasn't always as rosy as he thought. He was going to try to help the one who was a pessimist to see things maybe weren't as bad as they could be. And so there was an object lesson involved. They had brought in a giant mound of horse manure. And as they brought the first child in, uh, they, 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 they were going to give him each something that they really wanted. And so as they bring the first child in, he's got all these toys. Uh, the one who's a pessimist has all these toys in there. He wanted the best bike and the best video games. And so as he brings the first child in, He's excited at first about the video games and about the bicycle, but it isn't the latest model game. And the bicycle doesn't work or in the color like he wanted. And so the father thought to himself with the pessimist that he had tried, gave it the best shot to do everything that he could. 
But now he knows his plan is going to work on this child who is the optimist. In the other room, as we mentioned, there's a giant pile of horse manure. And so he takes the boy up to that room, flings open the door, and the child looks ahead, and he sees that giant pile of horse manure with a bright red shovel stuck on top of it. And to everybody's surprise, the boy gets giddy and excited. He runs up to the pile of horse manure, grabs the shovel, and just starts shoveling away. Psychologist doesn't understand what's going on. Dad's kind of confused at what's happening. And, and so finally, they get the boy down from there and they say, they say, son, don't you realize this is just a pile of horse manure? How is it that you're so excited about all this? And the father couldn't believe what the son said. He said, Dad, with a pile of horse manure this big, there's got to be a pony around here somewhere. Friend, I want you to think about life. I want you to think about the problems that we sometimes face. But I also want you to think about this. A lot of it is how you look at it. Do we look at the problems or do we look at the benefits? Are we pessimistic in our approach to life? Or do we see that Christians have truly been blessed far more than we could ever begin to imagine? So let's talk today about the benefits of being a Christian. What is it that a Christian has been so blessed with? One of the Christian benefits is we have redemption in Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 3, verse 24. I want you to notice in your Bible this verse with me. Listen to what the Scripture says about the redemption that the child of God has. The Bible says we're being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Well, what does it mean to be redeemed? In whom we have redemption through His blood, Colossians 1.14. Redemption means to, to buy back. It's as though something was sold and then you found that one day and bought it back. You'd really, maybe you didn't want to sell it and you kind of regretted selling it. And so the opportunity came and you bought it back. And what a, what a treasure and wonderful thing that was. Friend, a price was paid to buy us back to God. We sold ourselves into the slavery of sin. We gave our lives over to Satan by making bad choices. Christ ransomed us back to God by his life. Revelation 5, that lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world, that's Jesus Christ. He gave himself for all mankind. 1 Timothy 2 verse 4, he's the propitiation for our sins, but not for ours alone, for the sins of the whole world. And that price was paid to buy us back to God with his own life. I want you to listen to the words of Galatians chapter 1, verse number 4, and notice what the Apostle Paul here says about that price being paid. Of Jesus, he says, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age by the will of our God and Father. Christ freely offered his life so that we could have the hope and the joy of heaven. What benefit is there to being a child of God? What, how can we take a positive approach to life? I've been redeemed, bought back to God by the blood of Jesus Christ. Second benefit that Christians have, all spiritual blessings are ours. And one of those blessings is there's no condemnation to those who are in Jesus Christ. I want you to take your Bible and open to the eighth chapter. And I want you to notice what the Apostle Paul says in verse number one. The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but walk according to the Spirit. The idea of condemnation, what are we talking about? Well, the Bible says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe shall be condemned. If a person's not in Christ, he's going to be condemned to eternal destruction. You see, the Lord is coming back in flaming fire to take vengeance on two types of people, on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Just like in Luke 16, where the rich man went to torment, just like the liars and all others are going to burn in the lake of fire and brimstone, there is condemnation coming. But 
the benefit the child of God has is that Christ has overcome sin, and so can we. Jesus says, in essence, in Revelation 3, verse 21, if you overcome, you can come over and live with me. On the day of judgment, the child of God is not going to stand in the place to the condemned. This is the promise he's promised us, eternal life. 1 John 2, verse 25, and God who cannot lie promised that before time began. Hebrews 6, 18, Titus 1, verse 2. And so it's not going to be a day of surprises. If we're a child of God, trying to walk in the light, 1 John 1, verse 7, friend, the Bible clearly teaches there is no condemnation to those who are in Jesus. Here's what you want here. Let's make it as clear as we know how. If you're a child of God, by the blood of Jesus, you're trying to walk in the light, giving all the credit and glory to God. On the final day, we will not hear, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, I never knew you. That's condemnation. The child of God does not stand in a place of condemnation. He stands in a place of glorification when he hears the words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. Which leads us, my friend, to a third benefit. A third blessing of being in Christ is that we have victory in Jesus. Turn in your New Testament to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 with me. And I want you to see what 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14 says. The Bible says, Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. I really like that word triumph. Has anybody ever told you what the word triumph means? Triumph is the word try with a little bit of oomph added to it. And that's what we're talking about. The victory, the never give up, never give in attitude. Christians have victory in Jesus Christ. See, my friend, right now, we're in a pretty fierce battle. We're fighting the good fight of faith. First Timothy chapter 6. Just like in the Garden of Eden, we're being tempted and tried in every way. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against a spiritual host of wickedness. Ephesians 6, verse 12. And we must take up the whole armor of God. Yes, we're in a battle right now. And I've got to prepare for that battle. I've got to put on God's armor and, and live and act and talk like God wants me to live. But listen carefully to me, friend. This is what separates. This is the benefit of being in Christ. If... I do these things. God will give us the victory. Listen to the Apostle Paul. Not because he had done it on his own and not because he was bragging about himself, but Paul said, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. It's as though there's a sigh of relief when you cross the finish line. Henceforth, in the future, there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me, but not to me only, but to all those who've loved his appearing. There's a day coming when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to the glory of God that Jesus is the Christ. Philippians 2 verse 9. On that day, don't you want to be on the right side? the victorious side, the side of God and his people. My friend, if you're a child of God, that victory, listen to 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 57. The Bible says, Thanks be to God who always leads us in victory in Jesus Christ. You have the victory. You're on the winning side. God has already, Hebrews 2.14 says, Jesus through death overcame him, had the power of death, and has released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. Christ has already defeated the devil. The battle's already pretty much been won. All we've got to do is continue to be faithful to God, and we'll have the victory on that great day. What other benefit and blessing is there for the child of God? Friend, we've got a second chance in Jesus Christ. Open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 with me, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says in verse number 17. The Bible says, Therefore, 
If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Isn't that such an encouraging verse? If you're in Christ, the old things have passed away. It's like you've got a marker board. Or if you remember a chalkboard and it's all messed up with chalk or the marker board's been written and scribbled on and there's marks everywhere on it. And then somebody comes in with a good cleaner and they clean it, make it white, crystal clean, doesn't look, everything's taken off and it's given a second. That's the idea of Christianity. Our lives were marred up before and you he made alive who were dead in your sins and trespasses. Ephesians 2.2, 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 12. All of us we're talking about have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10, Romans 3.23. And the wages of that sin is death, Romans 6.23. And yet the scripture says, God be thanked, though you were the slaves of sin, Yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered by obedience to the gospel, by the blood of Jesus, by his death and sacrifice. Just like a new creature, we have a new life and a new focus. We're raised out of that watery grave. Listen to this, to walk in newness of life. What does that mean? To live differently, to live faithful to the Lord, be faithful unto death, to be a good worker in the kingdom of God, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, to be a, a, an example in everything that we say and do. Do you really appreciate what second chances mean? Have you ever, you ever said something that you probably shouldn't have said, and if you'd probably thought about it a little longer, maybe you wouldn't have said it. You ever had one of those episodes where you'd like to take it back, maybe redo something? We got to redo. We got to restart. We got a second chance in Christ. And that's what it being a Christian means. We get to start over again and we get to do the best we can to serve God. But friend, I want you to also realize this. As you think about, as we think about being a Christian and what a benefit and blessing that is, one of the things about being in Christ is we've got every spiritual blessing in Christ. I want you to take your Bible and look to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Do we really appreciate what a blessing it is to be a child of God? 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we can become children of God. Friend, it is a blessing that we can hardly begin to fathom. Galatians 4 verse 4 says, In the fullness of time God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. We have become adopted sons and daughters of God, brought in to His own family with love by Jesus Christ. And my friend, as you think about every spiritual blessing, it's not just the privilege to be a child of God. Part of that is we have that heavenly inheritance that's been promised God's children. Paul said in Philippians 3, verse 20 and 21, our citizenship is in heaven from which we eagerly wait for the Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our lowly body into his glorious body. Where are you a citizen at? Say, well, I'm, a, I'm a citizen of the United States of America. I'm a citizen of such and such state. Not really. Our true citizenship is in heaven. We're just wanderers, pilgrims, exiles, sojourners, whatever word you want to use, uh, here for a short while because we're waiting on that heavenly reward. We're waiting on that day when the tabernacle of God is with men. God will dwell with them. He'll be their God. They shall be his people. And God will wipe away every tear from their eye. No more sorrow. No more death. No more pain. No more crying. For the former things have passed away. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 4. And then we have this blessing. 
the Christian. Part of the benefit we have as a Christian is that the dead in Christ are promised to be blessed and they will rise first and be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is a beautiful picture of the second coming of Jesus. And it says there, there'll be a shout, the voice of an archangel, the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Our loved ones who've gone on, friend, they're going to come up first. They're going to be with the Lord and we're going to join them and we'll always, all of us, be together with God for eternity. But a big part of this idea is that death is no longer the enemy. That enemy was defeated at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh, death, where's your sting? Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 15, strength of death is sins, the law. Paul says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to hear the words of Revelation chapter 14 as it relates to the Christian's death. Listen to Revelation chapter 14 and notice what the Bible says in verse 13. John says, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them goes right along with what the psalmist said in Psalm 116, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Friend, you want to hear what's great about being a Christian? If I could tell you there's a way of life, there's a way of living, there's a promise, and if you live true to this promise, you don't even have to fear death. You talk about something to get excited about. My friend, that's the Christian life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he'll live. And Jesus said, you'll never really die in essence. How? Because when we exit this body, we're not dying. The body may die, but our spirit returns to be with God and we're going to live forever. Matthew 25, 46, the righteous will go away into eternal life. And friend, let me mention one final thing. What's one of the greatest benefits of being a Christian? As a child of God, I have access to God's amazing grace. We sing about it, right? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. What a beautiful wording. And that's exactly what the Bible teaches. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and great appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friend, everything we are, everything we ever will be, everything we have is by the grace of God. And on that judgment day, when we hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant, by grace will we be saved. You see, the law came through Moses but grace and truth, they're in Jesus Christ. And that grace makes salvation available. Grace is what calls Christ to go to the cross. You know, Paul said, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that we, through his poverty, might be made rich. Why did Jesus come to this earth? Why leave heaven? Why come to this earth? Why live like a pauper? Why allow people to berate and mistreat and abuse and say things about you when you had the power just like that? Why endure that? Why not just end it? Grace calls God. Grace calls Jesus to leave heaven, to face everything he faced, to do everything he did, to live the way he lived, to make that sacrifice because that's how bad he wanted us to be saved. My friend, if that's true, what a great benefit is to being a Christian. And so we ask you today, have you obeyed the gospel? Are you in Christ? Have you obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ? Friend, getting in Christ doesn't just accidentally happen. Part of God's plan of salvation is what puts us into Christ. I've got to believe. The Bible teaches that to get in Christ, 
And to be a child of God, I must believe. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm he, you'll surely die in your sins. John chapter 8, uh, verse number 24. Once I've accepted that truth, I've, I've made a commitment to that, I've got to be willing to turn my life around. Acts 3.19, I must repent and turn that my sins may be blotted out. Once I make a 180 degree turn from sin to God, I change my way of thinking and I change my way of acting. I must confess Jesus as Savior. With the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, verse number 10. And then the Bible tells us how to get into Christ. Galatians 3.27, as many of us as were baptized into Christ have clothed ourselves with Christ. How do you get in Christ? You're baptized into him. Romans 6, 1 through 4, we must repent and be baptized for the remission of our sins. Acts 2 verse 38, Saul of Tarsus kind of stands as a premier example of how to Obey the gospel to find that point where sin is removed and we're right with God. Saul is told by the Lord specifically, go into the city, it'll be told you what you must do. Acts 9 verses 4 through 6. Ananias, God's servant, comes to Saul. And he says, Saul, Saul, why are you waiting? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. You see, my friend, it's the blood of Jesus that is the sacrifice for sin. Romans 6, 1 through 4 teaches us we contact Christ's death when we're buried with him in baptism. And so if you've never done that, we encourage you to do that. If you are a child of God, don't lose sight of the benefits we have and may each one of us be encouraged to live faithful to God every day. And please join us next time as we study more from God's divine word. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, and downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the Gospel of Christ.